How will you take action today? And that is such a great question from Singapore. And they have come so far, really shift to make a better world. And we can see the business is now indeed uniting to create a sustainable, inclusive, and resilient world, the world we all want. The business leaders from Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore, they just showed us how we all can integrate sustainability into our unique business strategies. And now it's time to hear from the backbone of the economy around the world. And yes, we are talking about the small and medium enterprises or SMEs. Believe it or not, SMEs represent 90% of all the businesses and employ more than half of the world's population. And our next panel is Asian SMEs. In the driving seat for transformational change towards sustainable development. And the lineup will include SMEs, experts, and large companies who engage thousands of SMEs in their supply chains. But before we get to the next discussion, it is my great pleasure to share with you the keynote address from the ACC MSME Share and the Secretary General Ministry of Entrepreneurial Development and Cooperatives or MIDAC Malaysia. Please welcome Yang Baba Hakei, Suriani Binti Dato Ahmad, and now let us hear from her. Distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and warm greetings to all. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this program organized by United Nations Global Compact, UNGC, in collaboration with Global Compact Local Networks and hosted by Thailand. As you are all aware, micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, are the engines of growth and make diverse contributions to our region's economy and social well-being. In ASEAN, more than 90% of total businesses in various sectors are MSMEs, generating a significant 50% of total employment. A report from the International Labour Organization, ILO, stated that 7 out of 10 jobs in developing economies are created by SMEs, which makes them important stakeholders in the success and failures of national and regional sustainability agendas. However, Although MSMEs comprise a major part of the national and regional economies, they are broadly lagging on adopting and integrating sustainability within their core business operation. Data from UNGC participating companies show that only 54% of those with revenue of less than 25 million US dollars have set measurable sustainability goals as compared to approximately 86% of companies with revenue of more than 1 billion US dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, on an enterprise level, there could be numerous reasons why MSMEs are not prioritizing and integrating sustainability into their business operations. These could include lack of awareness among business owners and employees of the importance and benefits of sustainability practices, lack of access to sufficient resources, inadequate and insufficient skills and management practices, lack of information on how to implement sustainability, and lack of alignment between intended sustainability initiatives with other business initiatives. On a larger level, recent events too have adversely impacted the sustainability of MSMEs. According to the United Nations Secretary General's Global Crisis Response Group, the current war in Ukraine has set in motion a three-dimensional crisis on food, energy and finance that is producing cascading effects to the world economy. In this crisis context, MSMEs face an unprecedented set of challenges, in particular from disruptions of an already fragile global supply chain, access to finance and business continuity issues, in addition to impacts felt by the COVID-19 pandemic. Typically, MSMEs have lower survival rates than do their larger counterparts, and during times of crisis, they are often the least resilient due to limited cash reserves, smaller teams and client bases, and less capacity to manage commercial pressures. In some developing economies, regulatory uncertainty and weak institutional support are problematic 
which further reduces the survivability rates for MSMEs. Additionally, operational priorities and underdeveloped regulatory agenda on sustainability and knowledge gaps at the enterprise level are challenges that further factor into MSME underperformance on sustainability. Moving forward, MSMEs will need to seriously address the environmental, social and governance aspects in their business models to meet sustainability goals in order to remain relevant in the global value and supply chains. I hope today's gathering of local and global leaders from business, civil society, government, global compact local networks and the United Nations will be able to inform, inspire and catalyze local and regional solutions for advancing policies that not only drive economic growth but accelerate progress towards the objectives of sustainable development goals in the ASEAN region. I thank you for inviting me to participate in this program. I wish you all fruitful deliberations and a successful session. Thank you. Daito Suriani Pinti, Daito Ahmad, thank you once again. <clears throat> to have someone in Daito Suriani position rally behind the SME of our region is indeed what we need in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. And now may I invite the panelists and our moderator for our next session. We have the Chief Executive Officer of Guava Amenities Private Limited, Mr. Gabriel Tan. Welcome, Mr. Gabriel, on stage. And next, we have the Chief Executive Officer of Brandy and Companies, Kun Piyachat Isara Paddy. We have the head of SME Academy, Center of Entrepreneur Development and Research, or CEDA, Malaysia, Mr. Admin Hassan. We have the group head of risk management and the sustainability of Ayala, and also the board chair of Global Compact Network Philippines. Miss Victoria Vicky A. Tan, and she will be joining us virtually. And the moderator for this section will be the executive director of the UN Global Compact Network Malaysia and Brunei, Mr. Faros Nadar. Thank you, Mr. MC. Uh, Assalamualaikum, good afternoon, good evening, or even good morning from wherever you're joining us uh, around the world to all. So I'm Faros Nada, and it's a privilege and honor to be here today at the UN ASCAP to moderate this session. This session focuses on a very important stakeholder in achieving the world we want, small, medium enterprises, or fondly known as SMEs. However, the collective action opportunities of SMEs are actually large. Collectively, they are among the largest employers and economic contributors to ASEAN economies, right? As shared by Datuk Suryani earlier. Hence, if we get them in to align and champion the SDGs, SMEs' collective contribution would equal and even outsize corporate contributions. And as supply chain building blocks for corporates, SMEs too will influence how sustainable corporates can become. However, SMEs face unique challenges when it comes to sustainable actions. Having worked for an SME myself before, I know first-hand challenges around resources, talent, and market access often hamstring good intentions. But due to SME structure, the high level of agility would be the real power of SMEs to drive transformational change towards sustainable development. So joining this panel, we have four expert speakers to deep dive uh, into these issues. Now, before we kick off the discussion, I would like to remind all participants to share your thoughts on, the, on, our social, on your social media uh, by using this hashtag, yeah? hashtag Uniting Business, hashtag Leaders Summit, and hashtag UBL ASEAN. So let's turn our attention to our four esteemed speakers. So what I'm going to do is that, you know, let's have a 
a conversation, right? Um, uh, uh, sharing our thoughts. I just like to call upon each panelist to do a quick fire introduction about your organization, so everybody knows uh, what what you're doing. Uh, may I please invite uh, Mr. Gabriel first to share? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Gabriel from Guava. So our company uh, helps global hospitality chains, airlines, and cruise liners to improve profits by embracing sustainability efforts in the area of gas amenities, uh, healthcare supplies, as well as F&B consumables. And for us, uh, we operate in a couple of countries in Southeast Asia, including uh, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, and Singapore. Yep. Thank you, Gabriel. Uh, can I move on to Kun Piachat? Not sure. Hello. Hello. Thank you. It's just um, a technical challenge that happened in this morning in Thailand. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Piyashat Isalat Pakdi from Bandy and Companies. You can call me just Arm, um, easier one. So, um, Turning back for 10 years, when we started a company which is one of a kind, trying to transform the company, which is a conventional one, a single bottom line. Because basically the business trying to focus on maximizing profit. What we try to do is to transform them into sustainable ones, with focusing on a balance between people, profit, and planet. It was happened on the day that no one talking about sustainability. It's long time ago, 10 years ago, but it was very popular during recent years. And we were trying to make sure that focusing on sustainability is not just only a long-term goal, but rewarding you a short-term result. So it is basically creating a values and adhere to your brand, creating your brand equity, turning from the company, focusing on industry, to the brands of values. That's what we do. Thank you. Can I turn attention to Inche Atman for quick fire sharing about SEDA? Okay. Hi. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Edmund Hassan. I am uh, from uh, Center of Entrepreneur De uh, Development and Research. Uh, we are part of SME Bank uh, in Malaysia. Uh, one of the probably the only bank in Malaysia that specializes on uh, SME development and also SME financing. So uh, we, we are, SME Bank is very, very uh, um, active in terms of uh, its ESG, uh, putting out its ESG roadmap and, and trying to uh, inculcate uh, ESG and sustainability for SMEs uh, starting of last year. And uh, this is one of the the, the, the things that we're doing, and um, I'm glad to be here to be to be also championing uh, SMEs uh, in ESG. Thank you. And now we turn our attention to last but definitely not least, Miss Victoria, who is live from Manila. Okay. Can you hear us, Vicky? Oh, we can. Uh, we can't hear her. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Hi. Okay, right. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this in this in the world. So, I'm Maria Victoria Tan. I'm the head of Group Risk Management and Sustainability of Ayala Corporation. In my function, I'm helping the Chief Risk Officer and Chief Sustainability Officer in creating programs that will strengthen the risk-aware culture and also programs that will embed sustainability in our uh, operations, in our business units. Ayala Corporation is one of the largest conglomerates in the Philippines and we have a long history. We have been operating in the Philippines since 1834. We have varied interests from real estate, telco, uh, financial institutions, power generation. We have interest in healthcare and logistics and also a list of portfolio investment in water utilities, 
infrastructure, industrial manufacturing, and I think you name it, you have it. Uh, as that's part of the group of business units. For us, sustainability is a combination of ESG, and that is managing your risk and exploring the opportunities, managing your impact, and also plus creating shared value for all the stakeholders that we serve, not only our shareholders. So for us, that is sustainability. And definitely in our ecosystem, we have a lot of SMEs. Over to you, Farus. Thank you, Vicky. All right. So I'm going to uh, run the panel with a few open questions to all the panelists and some targeted specifically for your organizations. So to warm up the panelists, I'm going to throw an open question, right? Uh, and then I'll just call for volunteers who would like to answer first. Right? So, you know, the new normal means an increasingly volatile, uncertain, complex, and an ambiguous world, or VUCA world, right? And with the rising threats of short-term issues like inflation, uh, supply chain disruptions, why should SMEs focus on sustainability? What are your thoughts? So, I say, Gabriel, would you like to go first? Okay, I can, I can give it a try. So, uh, in our area of business, uh, the our company actually worked with uh, global hotel chains, airlines, and cruise liners. And as you pointed out uh, just now, to mention that in the VUCA world, the rules of the game has changed. And one of the key strengths of smaller team is actually agility. And in the past, you can have organizations that has been doing things for many, many years, and you don't need to change, and things are fine. However, we know from uh, what has happened in the last two years, even our clients, when we shared with them uh, pre-COVID about our uh, ways of doing business. So what we do differently compared to others will be in the way that we organize our value chain. Compared to other companies in a similar business that centralize their manufacturing, Guava actually decentralized our manufacturing. We bring manufacturing activities closer to where our clients are located. And that helps us not just to actually lower our logistical costs, but actually helps our customers to create a more resilient supply chain. And beyond that, we also understand clients are coming to us to say, I need global solutions, but it has to be locally competitive for it to be globally scalable. And this particular needs of our customers has been something that a lot of the players in the industries with status quo business model has unable to address because the way they work versus how the supply chain is supposed to be coordinated for the future are very different. And for us, we distribute directly to our customers without intermediaries. And that actually helps to lower our cost structure. And last but not least, by not being a manufacturer on our own, we are very much focused on solutions. We are focused very much on our customers, what they are trying to achieve, what are the aspirations and putting in place solutions to address those needs more than just selling products. And therefore, after the pandemic, what we have seen is that there has been greater awareness on uh, uh, resilience and also uh, agility. That means anytime there are tinges in a the market, there needs to be a lot of flexibility built in into every businesses to make sure that you are able to actually uh, continue your business. And for us, being, I would say, a smaller team, enable us to actually achieve that with a lot ease compared to when, if we were to be a much bigger player. Yeah. Thank you, Gabriel. All right. Um, uh, okay. Let me, uh, Farouz, can yes, I Yes, please, 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 Vicky. Lady first. Yeah, yes. yeah, thank you so much. So I think if you go back to the definition of sustainability, it is really about the enterprise being able to manage its, its negative and positive impact. And I think it, it takes into the equation whatever will be or whatever is the current situation, whether this is the book world, because nothing is permanent in this world. It is being able to make sure that you are future-proofing the organization. So whether you are an SME, a large enterprise, or a multinational uh, enterprise, sustainability is part of the things that we need to do, we need to address in our day-to-day -day operation. If you want to, to, to remain 
to be relevant to our stakeholders. And that means that we are also addressing the issue of being in operation for the long term. So whether it is the inflation that we have to face, whether it is the pandemic that we have to face, which is still ongoing, or whether there is some issues in the supply, supply chain, we have to make sure that we are addressing this issue and that is really being sustainable for the long term. Over to you, Farus. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Piachat? All right. Um, so I think there are two questions from, from one of your question which is about WUCA and about how SMEs should adapt themselves to survive in the world of WUCA. I think there are two ways to deal with this situation. First, you have to be paranoid. Of course, this is something that needs an urgent action, especially for SME. And we all realize what separate SME from LE is a capital. Right? The large enterprise, they have a capital, so they can survive longer. But for SME, if you ask them to think ahead for one year, five years, 10 years, they say, I need to make sure that I have a paycheck from my employee for next month. So that's something that we need to trade off between long-term goal and short-term result. That is something to be paranoid. So they need to be adapt, but that is something that they are good at unless they stick to some business in particular, because disruption destroys some businesses, but there are emerging business as well in the times of difficulty. So the mindset that you see the situation is quite different and make a uniqueness. The second way to deal with the situation is to understand, because WUCA is something, a new terms, but this is actually not a new thing that happened to our world. Turning back to a century, we, we faced the industrial revolution. At that time, the point is to access to product and service. So people just focus on industrial revolution. Whoever produces goods, products, service to serve the market globally, they will be the winner. But afterward, we see that capitalism is not a good friend only. It caused you a trouble. It's created something that unwanted. Environmental disaster, inequality. For example, if you look at the small picture, like our stage, our panel, you see that, oh, this is gender inequality because there is only men, right? But if you see the big picture for two session, it's really complement to each author. Last session of women. So you have to look at the big picture and say, how can we achieve the business while maintaining a good condition of environment and you know, trying to solve the inequality that decoupling the, the problems? We try to do that, but we do things separately. You do your way, you do your way, I do my way. So we cannot achieve the collective impacts that we're trying to do. That is why we have SDG, to make sure that we see the same goal, we, said, we share the vision, things going smoothly. We, we turn our dialogue into actions until we encounter the pandemic and like hit refresh button. So the pandemic, VUCA, inequality, inflation, uh, war, everything. You have to say that now every single company need to focus on both upside and downside. Your business cannot achieve growth only. You have to make sure that you have a single strategy that tackle smartly both how to seek for the new opportunities and how to make sure that the way creating the value with stakeholder, which is mitigating risk. Thank you. No, uh, in my many years involved in many uh, sustainability conferences, that is an original thought that sustainability solves paranoia. I think many of us will use that moving forward as well. Adman, over to you, Adman. Um, thanks. Uh, so I, I think I, I would like to extend on what Am said just now, uh, especially on the refresh button. Uh, you know, uh, the past two years, you know, of some of us, which some of us uh, describe as the blip, right? Uh, so um, 
has been a roller coaster ride, especially for businesses and SMEs in Malaysia. Uh, on in some uh, sectors, especially the glove making uh, sectors in Malaysia, uh, the demand of of gloves was was uh, skyrocketed in the beginning part of the pandemic. But ESG held them back because they a lot of them, you know, were not having ESG issues. So, you know, on one end, VUCA means uh, SMEs having to 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 really adapt and really look at surviving in the next few years. So they have to do anything that they could in in terms of not just having the profit, but having enough healthy profit for them to survive. But now that it has become an issue that, that holds them back. They would also need to look at ESG and also sustainability as um, something of a requirement that they have to do in order to survive, not rather than just profits. So that's what I think. I mean, let me just hold you for the for to direct another question to you and also building on Arm's point that you know capital is a key differentiator for large and SMEs. Now, what's your take on the role of sustainable finance uh, in terms of SME sustainability transition? Uh, I mean, since you are with the SME bank, right? Do you see a keen interest for SMEs to opt for sustainability link financing despite ESG expectations, which means extra work right. for such facilities? What, what's your thoughts? I wouldn't want to mince my words, but it will be a challenge, just to be honest. Uh, when you talk about uh, ESG financing um, and SMEs, uh, the key issue with SMEs is basically they don't even know what ESG mm -hmm. is. And you are already talking about financing that's, that's, that's uh, you know, putting a requirement on ESG. So the biggest challenge is first to get them to be aware of what ESG is in the first place before putting it, before telling them that it would be something that they would need to do. So um, um, it's like, you know, you're being given a credit to buy a kitchen appliance, but you don't even know what it does, right? So, so I think uh, it's, it's a, uh, the, the, the how we have to do before we even introduce or as we introduce uh, the finance, uh, this, this uh, sustainable financing, we need to ensure that we put enough efforts in terms of educating uh, uh, the SMEs on the on ESG on sustainability, and this is what uh, SME Bank and uh, uh, CEDA and also uh, our ministry uh, Kuskop is trying to do because um, together with our stakeholders, we are trying to build this agenda in Malaysia to, make, to ensure that uh, the ESG, the, 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 the SMEs are, are educated, they are aware, uh, and they know, know how to face in, uh, and, and prepare themselves for ESG. Uh, so, and once that is, is, is well and good, uh, this is when uh, your, your sustainable financing will come as a, as a great enabler for, for them. This is what we think. Yes. Thank you, Edmund. Uh, which I think is a good segue uh, to get some thoughts from Gabriel, who is who, who you are implementing various sustainability practices in your uh, organizations, right? So, could you just share your thoughts, you know, in, in your engagement with the UNGC Ten Principles and the SDGs as a whole? Um, what has been, how has this supported in your business growth? Have you seen uh, actual profitability increasing? Thoughts. So for us, uh, we joined the United Nations Global Compact last year in February. Uh, after joining UNGC, we realized that the 10 principles as well as the SDGs are globally recognized principles that will actually help us to align our resources, not just internally, but together with that, our clients. Because a lot of our customers are also signatory to the United Nations Global Compact. So it allows us to sort of speak the same language. And uh, when we take part in the activities, they are organized by the GCNS in Singapore. I would like to say that there are two broad categories of, of uh, assistance that we have enjoyed. So I would say one will be community. Community in the sense of there is a networking together with other members. Uh, there is a ability for us to understand 
what is the best practices, and also to, uh, for example, now uh, we are participating in the young SDG leaders as a participating company. So what we do is that we give an opportunity for students, which is the young uh, sustainability leaders of the future, to understand a bit about our business and then give us uh, advice and uh, opportunities to see how can we do better. So I would say that that is a very strong uh, community involvement and uh, Global Compact uh, uh, Network Singapore also invited us to take part in the APEC Sustainability Award last year, which we won under the category of Sustainable Solutions. And then the Congratulations. Second, yes, thank you so much. And the second part of it is actually about capability building. So there are a lot of tools that we can get access to from participating in the carbon workshop where we get to know about how to measure our carbon emissions. And then we also take part in this uh, sustainability courses that the GCNS organize. We also try to see what we can do better in terms of improving our sustainability capability. And therefore we have actually signed up for the SDG Accelerator and there are many other such uh, capability building that we can get access to and being actively involved in the local network. And I would say that uh, I think similar to one of the previous panel, I think there was a lady that shared that I think for us what has happened was 2020 was our worst year, but 2021 was our best year to date. So I think that is a testimony of how being sustainable as a business enable us to be resilient, uh, bounce back from the, the crisis that we all are facing, uh, and then uh, looking forward to see what can we do to improve and do better, not just alone, but together with other stakeholders. And I think I would like to add on something. It is true that uh, SMEs, if you were to compare that to large enterprises, they are constrained with regards to funding. But there are new ways of getting things done, which does not allow you, for example, in our case, it's not necessary for us to own every single manufacturing assets around the world, but we get to offer our customers the largest network of manufacturers to help global hospitality chains, airlines and cruise liners. And we can do this without owning a single asset. Today, that is possible. So, Beside looking at it from, from a limitations, you should look at sustainability as an opportunity. And if you were to rewrite the rule of the game, what can you do differently? And by being a smaller team, that's where you do not have so many legacy practices for you to unwind. And you can just say, okay, if this is how it's supposed to be done, let's do it. And you can easily test it out in a small ways. There's no need for you to, to do a big bang approach test it out and then with having participation in local networks like, like in our case GCNS, that helps us because that enables us to, to test out our ideas and solutions with experts. They are a lot better than us. And then now what we are doing uh, after COP26, there has been interest from global hospitality chains, airlines and cruise liners to actually move towards net zero. And right now what we are trying to do to help our customers is to actually uh, take part in the SGD accelerator in order for us to help our customer achieve net zero based on uh, science-based targets. So there are definitely a lot of benefits to, to join the local chapter of uh, UNGC. I think it's very interesting how you've linked a lot of sustainability language to uh, what do you call it, a uh, business speak as well. I think that's a very important uh, connection. Okay. Um, no, so, sorry, and when you're on the... Yeah, can, I, can I expand on what he, uh, Gabriel said just now? I think for a lot of SMEs that we encountered in Malaysia, and uh, a lot of them said, how can we be green if we cannot even get out of red? So a lot of uh, SMEs are saying, um, you know, this is an expensive exercise from the get-go. Because they are, uh, but but what you proved just now was, you know, it can be also a cost-saving uh, step rather than uh, an expensive step. So I think that that example that 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 Gabriel gave just now was a good one. Yeah. Thanks. Let, let me just zoom out to the next question uh, on this. Uh, so I'm just zoom up now to to uh, Vicky um, uh, for a corporate perspective on this, right? 
Uh, so no, no, Ayala is one of the largest companies in Philippines, if not in, in ASEAN, right? So how does uh, Ayala consider SME sustainability practices uh, in your engagement decisions uh, with them? Uh, is it a very important factor for you to decide who should be your suppliers? How do you look at this? Uh, yeah, so uh, earlier, um, when we started doing our sustainability reporting back in 2008, we have already considered uh, the ecosystem. So the supply chain is part of that engagement. And we have a lot of SMEs in our uh, ecosystem in the supply chain. Part of the accreditation process is we ask our suppliers, not only SMEs, to have a representation about sustainable practices, especially in relation to their uh, people management or their employees. And along that line, we that is being done annually during accreditation process and also during the performance evaluations of our suppliers. So it's part of the criteria before you become a supplier to any of the Ayala uh, companies. We are checking on your ESG practices and of course more, more on the compliance side. Uh, I think that's the EC um, step to be on the ESG is to make sure that you are complying with the required rules and regulations in the operations, in the business operations, or in the place where you operate. And then after that, we have this performance evaluation of all our suppliers. And then I think uh, five years ago, we started um, giving a free training to all our suppliers. We started with one company and we did this sustainability 101 reporting training or sustainability 101 training with the suppliers of that particular company together with an NGO. So I think going back to what Ahmed uh, mentioned a while ago that the main issue with SMEs is they don't really have a good understanding of what ESG is or what sustainability is. And so we have seen that also in our supply chain. And we did that particular training for all the SMEs, not only SMEs, but for all the suppliers of that particular company. So we intend to, to continue that practice, but it was actually hampered because of the COVID. Um, we have also to adapt and we have first to take care of our employees, but Part of that is also taking care of the bigger uh, supply chain, our third party service providers. So it is considered. And when I think um, the other guy, uh, the second speaker, let me, uh, Gabriel talk about uh, the, the net zero roadmap. So in our climate ambition, we are pretty sure that we will be touching again on the supply chain because that will be our scope tree. And that means that we will be engaging the suppliers, including SMEs, towards the climate ambition journey of Ayala Corporation. So part of the things that we do is not only internal, and part of that is really engaging the supply chain, the regulators, and even the community to make sure that this, this climate ambition roadmap will come into fruition come 2050. So it's very important to us that we, our suppliers, the SMEs included, understand the language of sustainability. Whether it is an ESQ or whether it's sustainability, it is best that we have a common language so that when we ask for something, they know what to give to us. And again, the, the first thing to do is to give them that awareness session or education session in relation to the sustainability language of Ayala Corporation. Well, it's, it's not different from the others. There may be some tweaking, but this is more uh, tailor-fitted to the sustainability journey of Ayala Corporation. I think that's on the uh, corporate journey. On the other hand, in relation to my other role, which is the chair of a Global Compact Network Philippines. We have a flagship program in relation to SNEs that started during the pandemic. We call it the 10 in 10 business agenda. 
And really, we want to help the SMEs to recover from this pandemic in the areas of financial assistance, healthcare, and connectivity, so that they can continuously uh, do their business online and they can work from home and they can continuously take care of themselves and also of their employees. So I think on that note, uh, Farouz, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Vicky. So we've heard, I think, a common thread here that, you know, uh, one of the fundamental challenges for SMEs and ESGs, understanding the understanding sustainability and what's the value of sustainability to them. And um, this is something that you work with uh, companies uh, with, right? So if I can just pose a question to you, right? How do you incorporate the triple bottom line uh, into your consultancy services, especially at the transformation level? And how do you inspire your clients to adopt the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact and the SDG framework? And also please do share some good results that you've gotten so far. All right, thank you. Um, I guess um, there are many takeaways from our panel, um, which is something I, I completely agree and something I'm in doubtful so, to share with you guys. The first thing is about, um, well, I, I, I would like to, to say about what and how. So about what, there are two concepts in sustainability world, which is sustainability related business. And the other one is sustainable business. So for sustainability related business, you're talking about founders, executives, small company that are trying to provide a solution for societal problems. They are good people. They're trying to tackle the problems and they want to see a better world. Uh, mostly they are younger generation, you know, a future of our world, our country. You, you recall the name, social enterprise, social business or somewhat like that. So they are good at tackling the problems. Unfortunately, they are not fully understand regarding to the business model. They don't know how to make sure that they tackle the problem smartly and also creating the revenue stream. So they're struggling in terms of making profitability. But for sustainable business, this is something we need to talk in deep because when we talk to SME and we ask them to do a sustainable business, they ask you what to sustain. I don't have anything right now. I need to build something. So sustainable business is a conversation with large enterprise. Because of what? Because you have cash cow. Mm. What you're trying to do is to sustain it, mm. to make sure that you can maintain that cash cow. Why keep exploring the new opportunities, innovating the new idea for new S curve? So if you come to talk sustainability, sustainable business with SME, they have no idea mm. because they don't have anything to sustain. So it comes to the question you raised to educate them. I think now the concept of ESG has been spreading out globally. We can just search, um, although we have so many definitions, a triple bottom line, ESG, SDG, whatsoever language. It doesn't seem like interesting to them because they focus on short-term result. Instead of trying to talk sustainability with SME, why don't you try to say there is another business opportunity, a billion dollar business opportunity. But what you have to do is you have to provide a solution for this planet and these people. Because you come into the business, you want to make money. Yes, you still can make money. And this is the opportunity, right? Seeing from another side that Gravel mentioned would be very critical. Because if you can't do that, it's not about awareness, it's about careless. They don't care about sustainability because in order to sustain the world, I have to sustain my family, I have to sustain my employees. First, that's the key. So in order to, to make sure that SME and sustainability can get along hands in hands, I have three solutions as a framework. The first one, it's about SME themselves. 
First, they have to make sure that they have a right mindset regarding to sustainability. It is a new business opportunity, just like I mentioned before. A hundred years ago, we have industrial revolution because you want a car. You want a car. I want a car, right? So just massively produce a car. You can win in the market. But today, do you need a car? Maybe not. You need mobility as a service if you are in the developed country. Or if you're in developing country, you might try to explore electric vehicle. So it's, it's not a normal car. It is something that, that trying to coupling between economic growth and environmental friendly. That's the key thing that we need to mention. So they have to shift the mindset first, that sustainability is not something that we ask you to think ahead four years, 10 years, 20 and 30 years go something like that. But it is something that you can, you can do a business with. A second, if you have a mindset, you have to redesign the relationship with your stakeholders. Because your stakeholder, I have a book called Business as Unusual. Because now the business is unusual. You cannot just go into the market and do the same process with your supply chain. You have to re-communicate with your stakeholder that I'm going to do things differently. For example, if you got the company selling the processed food, when you meet the farmers, what are you trying to do? You're trying to, to minimize cost. So you buy them cheap and sell it cheap because you need a margin. Instead of that, I'm trying to make sure that we are going to meet the farmers and tell them the story if they can produce the high quality of food and fruits. I can sell it as a premium brand, as a premium products. So that is a win-win strategy between farmer and the company. So you need to communicate with them. And yes, you turn back to decide the process. You see it different. In the old fashioned world, you start from building a process and communicate with your stakeholder, mindset is left behind. But now you have to focus on the right mindset first and talk to your stakeholder, building a social contract, and then decide the right process that deliver the whole supply chain or value chain. That is something SME do with themselves. The second is a relationship between SME and the large enterprise or saying that multinational company. You have something that each other don't, so you can complement. As we talk about SME, the surviving period at the early stage is crucial. They cannot solve the problems that existing for long term in a week or even in a month. They need to make sure that they are very free with revenue, at least in the short term, but they need to make sure that that business model lead to something that can generate both profit, people, and planet. That is where MNC can jump into it, make a good relation, a brotherhood maybe. MNC can provide you a resource because you can't do sustainability as deep as those SME because you are too big. Um, slow to move and have so many process to deal with. So that kind of relationship turn the MNC into a platform that allow SME to grow on your platform, on your ad set and coach them and incubate them. This is how you build a next growth. And the third one, which is, um, I guess, um, important, especially in my country, but many countries around the globe, which is a relationship between SME and the government. So if you want SME to adopt sustainability at the core business, you have to make it easy. You have to make sure that it's easy to adopt that concept. You know, no such a business can achieve in failed ecosystem. You have to make sure that you decide the right ecosystem and make sure that um, a very quality seeds can grow in that ecosystem. It's a role of government to do that. Otherwise, you have to put it back to the first answer. So SME need to survive 
by themselves. So it is a time to make sure that we have a public-private partnership, we have a collaboration, but I want to straight out some concept which is important. I don't think collaboration is easy. So to be competitive, you need to have a collaborativeness. It's an ability to collaborate with authors to make sure that you create a bigger cake and provide a win-win solution that lead to a sustainable world. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to pick further into your thoughts about the, the key of having relationships between SMEs and larger corporates, right? And this is an open question to all the panelists. You know, in the new normal post-COVID, we see there's a change of corporate language in terms of uh, su supplier engagement, right? There's inclusivity, uh, engaging suppliers, supporting transition. Are you seeing this language being translated to actions fast enough? And may, perhaps some comments on how we can make it faster? Okay, so for, for us, uh, our business model is one with, uh, which is based on ecosystem. Uh, we do not just work with our customers, we also work with various other stakeholders into the entire value chain. One of the major one would be the manufacturers that we work with to be able to produce our uh, products uh, in country or within the same territory. But other than that, we also get uh, uh, quite a number of engagement with the UN bodies, especially to the United Nations World Travel Organization, as well as the United Nations Environmental Program, uh, on top of what we are doing with the UNGC. And we see that by collaborating together across the entire value chain, including that of our customers, we are able to to uh, create an impact. So perhaps uh, something that I can also share, not, not just limited to customers. So for example, uh, in the area of banking, we actually bank with HSBC. So since last year, the relationship that we have developed with HSBC is such that they understand that we are expanding globally. And then there's a lot of things that we could share to the SME community around the world. So most recently, uh, HSBC has an event, which is called Drive 2022 where they actually shared about the different solutions from their customers to share with the global uh, SME community within the HSBC ecosystem. And even most recently, there was uh, another uh, webinar that I was part of that was actually organized by the ASEAN Federation of Accountant as well as ACCA. Again, it's also talking about sharing with SMEs and how people can actually look at sustainability from a slightly different perspective. And uh, for me, I realized that uh, I, have, I have a very uh, personal quote that I, I, I love very much. And it's actually, uh, if you look at what you have, you always have more. So I choose not to look at what I don't have, but I always focus on what I have. And by focusing on what I have, I realize that actually you have a lot more in terms of resources, in terms of support. And when clients and partners, stakeholders comes and see for themselves, the kind of work that we do, the milestone that we have achieved, we realize that a lot of resources actually comes our way without even us asking. And clients are, for example, uh, with our customers. In the past, we used to have to renew the relationship based on a tender process every two to three years. However, now clients are working with us over a long-term strategic uh, objective like the net zero. And for that, we have been taken up from the tender process altogether. That means they are working with us for the long term. And the relationship is no longer transactional, but it's really a strategic one. Of course, in this case, we are very fortunate because our clients are global chains, airlines and cruise liners. However, I would like to emphasize that there needs to be a mindset shift, especially among the SME. And let's not talk about as sustainability being something that is good to have, but sustainability has to be tied to their survival. They need to know that they need to, perhaps to the different extent, but sustainability needs to be integrated to their business and is really tied to their survival. Because to, to give an example, what has happened to us in 2020, our travel business was actually practically decimated overnight. Suddenly borders was closed and none of our customers can actually open their hotels. But we realized at that point in time that clients needs change. What has happened was clients started calling us and saying that, would you be able to support us with PPE? 
like masks and isolation gown because our hotels are being converted as isolation facilities. So we focus on that opportunity. And we realize that by having multiple sources from different markets, we are able to actually secure supplies when others fail to do so. So again, it ties back to survival. If they do not realize that sustainability is tied to the survival, they will take an approach that I can do it, I can run my business without bothering about this. But if the mindset is one that we need to be resilient because we need to ensure that our business can continue into the future. And therefore, that is really the fundamental belief that we have as, a, as myself as well as our company. That means sustainability is the ability to continue what we are doing today into the future. That includes managing our risks. That includes understanding what are the customer pain points and how can we recreate our value chain to address those needs. And therefore, by, by doing it differently from what has been done in the past by others, and we really do not copy. Basically, for us, we reinvent the whole playbook. There is no such thing as, oh, we have always been doing it this way. It's always about reinventing and understanding what are the future opportunities there are. And I guess if SME could sort of adopt this kind of mindset, understanding that sustainability is tied to their survival, perhaps we could have a better chance of getting them to, to know that, okay, it's so critical and it's tied to my survival and therefore maybe I should look at it and then understand a bit more how can it uh, create opportunities or minimize my risk or perhaps prevent, uh, provide them with other opportunities. Thank you, Gabriel. Anyone else would like to... Oh yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, he hit the jackpot by saying the word survival when it comes to when it comes to SME. It's all about survival. Uh, in but then again, the in the beginning of the session, I mentioned about that story about that glove uh, 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 the uh, industry that we had, and we had a problem with that. But on the other part of the spectrum, we also have a glove manufacturer, which is also a customer of SME Bank, who's been doing very well. Uh, when when it comes to ESG and sustainability, to the point they, uh, I mean, the bank ourselves, we we won several awards last year alone for our financing. Uh, uh, what you call the sing sukos that we we generated last year, but they themselves also got featured uh, a number of times on BBC and whatsoever and a few other channels uh, in terms of their ESG efforts. And these ESG efforts for this particular glove maker called Meditech Glove has managed to, uh, to, to gain the, give them access to more markets overseas. So uh, I think earlier this year, they have gotten uh, an, um, uh, an invitation to open a, a new plant in Morocco for, for the European market to supply rubber gloves to the European market. And these are... Um, uh, this this company is an, uh, is a good example to other SMEs as well. If you if you incorporate good ESG practices, good sustainability practices, it's not only uh, a survival thing, but it will help you thrive further. Yes. Th thank you, Admin. Um, anything to add, or Vicky? Uh, probably yes. Yes, Vicky. Uh, just to add, I think I like what Gabriel uh, mentioned and also what Amit. Um, just mentioned a while ago that it is really uh, sustainability is about uh, being resilient, be, being here for the long term. Sustainability is not just additional cost, it is also cost cutting because, for example, part of that of being a sustainable company is to follow rules and regulations. So if you don't follow that, definitely your license to operate will be probably discontinued or there will be some penalties and fines that you really you don't you don't want to be in that position so is it be is it uh is is sustainability being cascaded to the suppliers to the smes fast enough i think that's one of the questions that you had earlier i think the quest the answer to that is yes and no Yes, for those who have a good understanding of sustainability and uh, with the right interaction with that particular supplier, they can give you the right data as well. Remember in the climate ambition, scope three is actually part of the value chain and they are part of that. And you have to teach them how to get scope one and scope two and what would be the uh, corresponding scope three for a company such as us. And then, uh, 
I also want to reiterate what I heard on the previous panel, and I think it was Esther Ann who mentioned this, that what get measured gets done. So part of the things that we have probably to invite with our SME counterparts who are very uh, uh, important part of the value chain is that let's uh, let's try to start measuring all of this uh, sustainability risk and or the indicators and from there probably we can work together on how are we going to move forward this is really an ecosystem we are both here for the long term the big large enterprises or the large enterprises will not survive without also the help of the SMEs. Uh, like if we also have some hotels in our portfolio and some of the things that we need in hotels are provided by the SMEs. So it is also our responsibility to make sure that these SMEs will thrive because that will also in, be impacting our operation. So, uh, very good um, insights from Ahmed and also from Gabriel and also from, uh, I cannot pronounce your name, uh, but this one definitely sums up what sustainability is. It is not only for the SMEs, but also for the large enterprises. It is being here for the long term and future proofing the organization. Right. Deep, right. So I'm 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 conscious of time, but I still have, like to have to pose two questions to the panelists. To pick um, your um, I just I just need to Sorry. add this one. Yeah, that, okay. Ah, right. yeah, sure, Quick sure, one. Sure. Right. Okay. Um, I guess uh, when when we talk about sustainability with SME, there are two kinds of SME. The first one is SMEs who are trying to maintain their status as an SME. And the second one is the SME that see S and M as a stopovers and trying to be large. So the second one, you need to think about sustainability clearly at the beginning because you know, embracing sustainability into your core business is not a rocket science. I have to mention this. It's just to make a decision. Your leadership, scale of your leadership is as equal as the scale of market that you are going to, to work on it. If your leadership is much bigger than just yourself, just the company, but you're taking care of people, communities, and planet, it means you are creating a bigger market for you to explore an opportunity. So it's important to, to ask yourself that you are SME just because of you want to make money, and then you don't care about the future. You, you, you can go with the flow. If, if you, you are about to quit, you can quit. But if you are SME, just to make sure that you, you step on the ladders in order to become a large enterprise, sustainability is a must. Thank you. Um, now, two more questions. We have only about less than 10 minutes, so you've got to be uh, concise with your responses. Yeah. So the, I think, you know, um, in the discussions that we are, we are looking at the challenges, uh, you know, and how we could get uh, SMEs on board to be more sustainable. But there are already uh, sustainability leaders in the SME space, case in point, our panelists uh, today. But in your opinion, how can we continue to identify such SME sustainability leaders and also, you know, recognize and reward them for taking these this, uh, leadership roles? Quick comments, questions? So I guess for, for us, uh, as I shared just now, uh, by being a member of uh, the GCNS, they actually were the one that reached out to us. Uh, sometime uh, in May last year, the team actually reached out to us to say that oh, we have an uh, Apex Sustainability Award coming up. Would you like to take part in this? And uh, more than just winning, it's also about understanding what we are already doing and seeing how we can actually improve. So I think having that uh, active uh, engagement with the local network actually helps. And they are the one that actually identify the different companies that are part of the ecosystem to see that, hey, which one could perhaps share a story or could be featured for other opportunities to be able to be shared with other members of the same community and perhaps also the broader uh, community. So I guess uh, it's, it's really about each and every company need to do their very best in what you do. And when you do the best, the market notice, your partners notice, your customers notice, and suddenly you are being presented with so many opportunities, 
more than what you could even ask. And even for us, sometimes we don't even need to ask the customers. The customers will say, oh, as we are working you know, very well in Asia Pacific, let's open up the bigger portfolio for you. So it's, it's really about each and every company doing your very best, not to be featured, not to expect anything in return, but I believe the market notice. Yes. Thank you, Gabriel. Um. Okay, so I, I, I guess um, this come to a role of UNGC that we are talking about today on the, on the stage. I think um, because of every single stage right now in this role, mentioning about collaboration, which means we cannot grow alone. We have to be growing together. So we are in the state not compete to win. We compete to be unique. Just like Rob will say, you have to be unique until people recognize you, until people see that what is your competency. And then there will be a kind of matching. UNGC can come to the place where you have to match between MNC, small company, large company, government, you know, like orchestra. You have to be a good conductor. And the second one is when you want to educate SME. I want to mention this because I am the person. I, I don't like being in the classroom. I don't like being teach. You know. Um, so if you want SME to join the class, many programs listed on the website, I don't think they pay attention on. But you can have it as a condition to support. You know, for example, in terms of financing, right? You need to be more educated. You need financial literacy in order to, to get loan, to get something to support your business. Make it like a game. Make it sure that you have a state to, to accomplish and you claim the ladders step by step. And the last one is local network played an important role because you need to understand the global context and bring it localizing a local content. So who is who? Make sure that you understand the relationship in the market because each market has a specific relationship. If you understand who can be a part of who, you can redesign the ecosystem. And now we're talking about ecosystem level. So it is not easy, but it is a must. Thank you, um, Admin. Okay, um, two words. <clears throat> In Malaysia, we have this thing called Kongsi Reziki. Okay? What that means is basically sharing of opportunities. So whenever, and it, it, it also coincides with the value of S, social. So what it means is basically when given an opportunity like this, or given an opportunity out whenever to amplify, whichever touch points that you have and examples that you have of best practices that you know of, share it. Because this is a very relatively new field uh, that a lot of people don't even know what to do. So if you know an example of another company that does this very well, then share. Even though it's not your company, but and 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 if, if there's a if there's a good program that is uh, being done by a particular company or a government, then share it with as many friends as you have, because uh, like Faru said just now, uh, you know, is it going fast enough? The answer is probably no, but I'm. Looking at this for the past 20 years that the ESG, you know, uh, and also the triple bottom line movement have, have been going. I think there's a lot more progress that we've done in the past five years. Thank you, Edmund. Yeah. Vicky, my yeah. countdown says one minute left. So you have the last words. Okay. So probably uh, to help us, to help out the SNEs, really the Global Compact Network, we offer... Uh, platform or educational access. I think Gabriel mentioned this, we have the SDG accelerator, we have the climate ambition accelerator. So by the word itself, we are accelerating your knowledge about a particular thing, a particular SDG, uh, the climate ambition, so that you can help yourself to be part of this conversation. Part also of being in the global compact network is to have that networking. As, and, and this one is in relation to what Ahmed said. It's about sharing of information, sharing of experiences. 
And sometimes the big companies may also need to learn from the small companies because of their agility, as what Gabriel mentioned a while ago, through the big companies sometimes have some difficulty with that, but we can learn from our SME counterpart as well, how we can do things. And that's the value as, of SME as part of the value chain. So be a member of a global compact network or any similar organization for you to learn, for the SMEs to learn about sustainability. And sustainability is not a nice to have, it should be part and parcel of the integrate or integrated in your business model or in your strategy. So I hope I use the one minute very well. So <laughs> I think that's a fantastic uh, way to end our panel. Uh, that's the problem with fascinating discussion. There's no is not enough time, right? I'm sure the panelists will be around if you have further questions uh, for them. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please join me for an in-person and virtual applause for our panelists today. And thank you, everyone. And enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you. Thank you.